Hi guys and welcome back to another video from Flying Raven Studios. I'm Ben and today we're going to look at cobble bases and how to get the best effect by using a few different tools and some green stuff. Come back after this. So let's take a look at the items that we're going to need for these cobble bases. First up, obviously the base would be a good start. Next, we're going to be looking for something to put the base in. So in this case, I've just used, again, a holder from Games Workshop, but there's lots of different variations out there that you can use. The important part that comes up next is the green stuff. Now, again, you can get lots of different types, you can use Millie Putty, or as I said, in this case, I'm using green stuff. Um, and again, you can get different variations of that from all sorts of places online. Just type it in on Google and it will come up with a variation of a few different ones. And the next item up is the thing that really kind of makes the magic of the cobble bases. It's a roller that has a, a texture on it that when you roll it over green stuff, it then gives you that cobbled look. Again, you can pick these up off of line from lots of different places, just type it in. So that's all you need to make the bases, but obviously once we've made them, we then need to paint them. So paint brushes are a good start. After the paint brushes, we are now going to start looking at the paints that we need. And in this case, it's the good old Agrax Earthshade. This is going to be used for giving your base a good shading, um, but we'll see that later on. Then I use a mixture of Chaos Black, and in this case it's Druid Bark, and finally uh, Pallid Witch Flesh. Just a mix of those gives you the, the colours that you're going to need to be able to make the cobbles really pop. And lastly, just some Grass Tufts. These are just some old ones that I found when I first started doing cobble bases, but they work really well. They're more of that kind of dried grass look, but again, you can pick Lots of different variations up from this, from lots of different makes, but just have a look online and you'll find the ones that you like the best. Now let's look at the tools that we're going to need to do this first section. So you're going to need some green stuff, some something to cut the green stuff with. In this case, I just use a pair of clippers, the base and the rolling pin. So first of all, take your green stuff and cut off what you're going to need. And it's not going to be a massive amount, um, but make sure you get an equal amount for both the blue and the green compartments. Now, I saw in a video recently leaving the middle section out because actually that section has already started to cure. And what you don't want is you don't want lumps and different texture inside when you're mixing the green stuff because you want it to be fairly smooth. So you just need to keep mixing it and make sure that you're mixing all of the blues and greens together so you do get that nice deep dark blue color. You don't want any mottling effect. You want it to be a very, very good clean mix. And as soon as you've done that, Put that down and grab yourself some water. Now this is just to make sure that the green stuff doesn't stick to your fingers. It's very, very sticky once it gets warm. So you want to ensure that you're still, it's still malleable and pliable, but it's not getting stuck. So next thing, place it on the base, push it all over, make sure you've got a good covering over that base. Uh, it doesn't have to cover the full area of the base because actually with the cobbles, you're kind of making it look like there's a few missing or something along those lines. So just give it a good kind of squidge down with your thumb and then go for the rolling pin. Make sure you coat the rolling pin in a good, again, good amount of water to make sure it doesn't stick, but you do get the texture for it. And then you get to do the best part. So it's literally just a case of putting a little bit of pressure and then rolling the rolling pin just over it once and then back on itself. Don't take the rolling pin off because if you do, it will then change the, te the texture of it coming out. Then just again, dip your finger in, make sure that you've Gently pushed it all down, trying not to lose any of the detail. And there you go, your cobble base is green stuffed and ready to be undercoated and primed. So once your base has been primed and ready to go, we will start with the first thing of the good old wash. So use an Agrax, and this is a case of literally plastering it all over. You want a really good coat. So as you can see, I'm just kind of getting a bit on the brush and then keep going over it and just keep going back and plaster it all over it. And it, it's worth taking a little bit of time on this, just making sure that you, have, that you have got a really good coat of Agrax on it because you want it to really seep into the, the grooves inside of the, the cobbles. That will make the whole base 
kind of really pop later on because you'll have quite a lot of negative space from that um, and it gives you a good texture and colour difference as well because once you've seen the cobbles they then stand out and pop a lot more. And there you go, that's all done and now we have to wait for it to dry. So once that's dried, the next stage is to paint the cobbles, kind of the individual cobbles, give them a bit of life. At the present time, obviously, they're looking very dull. So what we do is we start with the black, uh, in this case, chaos black, and the kind of more off-white colour, and again, the powdered witch flesh in this case, um, and mix them. So you just kind of get a nice grey colour. It's not going to be far off of, kind of in this case, the, the colour that I've primed the base with. It's just bringing it back. So we slowly work around and just make sure you pick up each of those cobbles, make sure you take your time on it. You don't want to rush it and get it into the grooves between them, but you want to have that nice finish where you you can see the difference between the, the cobbles that you've painted and the grooves where the wash has settled. So take your time, as I said, keep going over them. And if you need to go back, don't worry about it. It's not a problem, um, but just make sure you pick them all out. Once that first coat's done, then what you do is you mix a little bit more of the powdered witch flesh in and just slowly add, not to the full size of those cobbles now, just kind of do about a, a 75, 80% of them with that, that next kind of slightly lighter colour. So this is going to be your, your first level of highlighting. And again, you just kind of want to go around each of the cobbles individual uh, and just pick them up as you go. Then all you do is you repeat that over and over again, keep getting lighter and lighter uh, until you're kind of happy with the, the grey colour toning of your stone. Now, the, the nice thing with the powder witch flesh is it's kind of got a, a slight blue tinge to it. So it, it just means that the you end up with a, a cobble that pops a little bit more than if you just used like black and white, for example. So... And as you do with the highlights, you just need to get slightly less and less on each cobble. And you'll end up with almost going a kind of full pallid witch flesh. It's normally about, a, I, I look for about a kind of a 90-10 switch by the time I've finished. So you, you do get to that very, very light end of the, the colour range. Uh, and once you do, just give it a really, really gentle highlight, just on the very, very edge. So you're looking kind of at the, the technical term for an edge highlight now, and you're just going around doing each one of those cobbles and uh, just getting to the point where they they look like they are 3D, which is what we're looking for, isn't it? Um, and that they, they don't have a flat appearance to them. And once you've done that, you're, you're kind of finished with the cobble painting and you can move on to paint the rest of the base. So in this section, we're going to look at using the brown. Now this I use for painting the rim of the base and then painting any of the base that the cobbles didn't go on. So like when I said back when we were doing the green stuff, the cobbles didn't need to cover the whole entire base because it's quite nice to get that, again, texture difference between the, the actual cobbles and then almost like the earth underneath. So what you do is you just get a good consistency of paint and paint around the rims. This might take a couple of coats, depending on what brown you're using, but again, there's no rush to it. Um, and what you want is you want a real smooth coating all the way around the base, so that it then it just looks nice, it kind of frames it. So as you can see, that's framed that really nicely. And now we can move on to the next step, which is the grass. So last up is the grass. Now, the idea of this is to really embed those cobbles in and give them that natural look. What you want to do is you want to place them and just make sure that when you do, you just fluff that grass back up again, because sometimes when you're kind of pushing it on, it can get squished down. You want to put them on and ensure that they have that natural look. What you don't want to do is just kind of have them uniformed across all your bases. You want them to be very, very random. So as you can see there, that's pretty much it for the base. It's now got its grass on, it's been painted, and it's got a nice framing of that brown around it. So I hope that helps. So as you can see, cobble bases, really easy, with the right tool, a few little techniques, and you can come out with some fantastic looking bases. Hope you enjoyed it. If you get any problems, please put them in the comments below. We can have a look and we can come back to you with some answers. So don't forget, hit the subscribe button, press that like button, 
hit the bell so that you can stay in touch with us and you can keep up to date with the new videos that we've got coming out each week. If you've got any comments, please put them in the bit below. We'll get back to you as quickly as possible with any helpful tips or answers. Until next time, bye.